Okay, happy Tuesday afternoon to you all. Uh, I'm gonna continue on my uh, rear suspension tuning for this thing. And before I got into it, I wanted to show you exactly uh, the situation with the rear suspension. It's too soft, it's not too hard. Uh, I don't know which position this is in. The owner's manual says uh, that it's in the third position from the softest. I don't know if that's the case. I'm gonna back it down and then crank it back up and figure out where it's at. Uh, but as it stands right now, it's nowhere near uh, tight enough enough preload because you can see my zip tie buried in here <laughs> buried into the bump stop so what's happening is over even minor bumps uh, I'm getting full compression of the rear suspension and it's bottoming out on this uh, hard polyurethane bumper here so uh, I'm gonna dig this up out of there when I finish setting the spring tension and uh, take it for a ride check that throw again you know see how much compression I'm getting out of it but I'm betting it needs to go up at least a couple of clicks so here we go this is that let's see if I can get it done I am gonna use the uh, factory tools if I can get the key out of my pocket uh, I was gonna get my fancy spanners out of the garage but I figured I might as well do this with what everybody has on hand uh, and that's gonna be what comes with the bike so we we'll use this uh, factory tool kit here and it gets pretty wet under that seat compartment there if you run through water so don't store anything in there that's not in a Ziploc bag anything that you don't want wet anyway your phone the charger <laughs> any of that okay so here's the two pieces that we're gonna need the spanner wrench slash common screwdriver and uh, the extension here so I am going to do the uh, plastic sandwich bag trick on this because I don't want this to mar up that anodized black uh, coating on there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to back it down to the softest setting. Now page 123 of the North American owner's manual uh, for this tells you that you know clockwise is tighter and uh, uh, counterclockwise would be looser. They don't even say that. They just say clockwise is tighter. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go counterclock on it here and see if I can back it down. I don't feel a position. See, I'm even going through a sandwich bag and it's already geeking up the finish on there. I don't know if that's coming out on camera. So, not ideal. Be careful. Get in the clicker. I'm not getting any <laughs> clicks. So either there are no clicks, or this is one of those infinitely adjustable uh, things. Now mine is, it looks like it's all the way up on the top of the throw here, or the adjustment range. So let's keep going. Okay, so it just clicked. It took it a long time to click, but it did just click. Okay, so that was one. Going up for two. See, I scratched again. Yeah, I see detents in there. Okay, that's, here's our detents, guys. Very, very tiny, hard to see. And then there's mating uh, little half moon shapes in there. So it does have detents. I've done one, I'm halfway on the way to two, I think, I hope. I'm gonna double up this bag. That's two. That's three, and that's it. Okay, so it was set for the third position. Sorry, I hope I'm keeping you on camera. That was the third position, so now we're gonna flip this thing over the other direction. Try not to scuff it up any more than it already is. And uh, we're gonna go up to five. I'm gonna go up two clicks. So. Get back to okay, so that's that's the first detent there. Almost to the second one. That's two. Come on, turn. That's three, so I'm back where I started. Now we're gonna go up two. That'll be four, eight. Turn and don't scuff, please. Okay, so that's on the way to five. 
five. Okay, so now I don't know how many adjustments I've got in there, but I've just gone up two. We're going to see how that feels. Uh, be interesting to know how many turns are in this guy. Should I just find out? Let's go. We're on five. That's six. Seven. Get in there. That's eight. Nine. That's ten. Eleven. There's 12, and I want to crank it too far. It says don't exceed the maximum setting, but they omit that maximum setting number. I'm still going. There's 13, so yeah, I mean, the factory setting of three, wow, that's going to be really way too soft for most people, I would think. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see how far it goes, and then to go test it with a much higher position. It's 14 already. Fifteen. Sixteen. I, I don't know if I'm still on threads or if I'm on the same position. That's weird. I mean, we're talking... You can see how much thread I see on the, the collar now. 16. Let's keep going. 17. It's definitely getting tighter now. I can feel it. 18. really tight now. Yeah, see, I just scuffed real bad. You gotta be careful with this. Okay, I'm at 19. I'm not gonna go any further. Should I keep going? Come on. This is like this roulette wheel things. Let everything ride on black, huh? What is that, 19 or 20? I gotta go back on my video now. I mean, if they're only putting it on a 3 and it's got that much more compression to go, wow. I can't see the collar in here to know how far down I am. I certainly don't want to step that thing all the way down off the collar because then getting it centered back up and back on there is a real problem. I've done that before. Ask me how I know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you have to pull the shock off of the bike, compress it with a spring compressor to where you take all the load off of this and then you can reseat it. So I'm going to leave it right there. That's 19. Anybody else wants to go further than that, they can try it on their own bike. Uh, so I'm at either 18 or 19 there. I'm going to go all the way back down to zero and I'm going to bring this thing up to, what do you say? Uh, let's go 30% of the range. So six, we'll go to a setting of six. Obviously I have to cut a lot of this out so you guys aren't just waiting. Get in there. Get in the slot. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really marring this up, so I'm uh, I'm padding this. Anybody that wants to adjust theirs, be careful with what you're doing, because it's definitely scarring up the, the shock body. And I'm not doing it uh, naked. If I was, it would certainly be uh, much more scarred up than this. It'd be nice to find some Delrin jawed uh, spanner that won't cut it up. Maybe the uh, factory service manual will tell you how many steps are in this, but that, that should really be a uh, 
fun fact in the uh, owner's manual, I would think, considering this is a normal procedure for anybody that rides two up or with or without luggage. I mean, these are normal suspension changes that you should make before a ride, especially if you're altering your bike's uh, load by more than about 30 pounds, 40 pounds. So it makes a huge difference in the handling. Man, I'm chewing this shock up. Perhaps I should just stop and go get my good spanner out of the garage, eh? I think it's going to do the same thing on this, though. This is black anodizing is coming off so easy. Okay, so I'm going all the way down to zero again. I'm going to reset it at six because that's about one third of the throw. If I find that that's too stiff and I'm not using my uh, shock travel uh, appropriately, then I'll back it down. But I think we're going to find out that it needs to be at about 30% uh, and not barely 10%, not even that. That's where the factory setting was. Five, and we're going to go for six. Come on, you bastard. <sighs> Bag is getting thin. Stay on there. Six. Lots of gouges in my uh, shiny or black aluminum there. Okay, so I'm going to set this on the other side. I'm going to reset my zip ties. I'll show you how I'm doing that. Just dig them back out of there. I didn't want it to go that far in, but it did. And I'm taking care to use the the smooth side, not to scuff up this uh, shock piston here. Dig her out of there. Okay, so now reset this back up against the shock. Gently, gently, gently. I hope you guys are still on camera. Okay, so I press that all the way up uh, against the, the shock body again. I'm going to reset the other one. I'll go ahead and reset my uh, front uh, fork as well. Uh, I don't know where the front fork bottoms out but it's not using nearly as much uh, travel it doesn't seem like we're not getting up here to the uh, lower triple clamp so i hit a couple of speed bumps intentionally pretty hard to try to see where the front was going to end out so we'll just do a, a reset on both ends here okay i'm gonna pause this for now because this video is already getting long uh, i'm gonna set this one to number six try not to scuff up the uh, the pretty black uh, anodizing on that collar and uh, go take it for a ride. Okay, I'm going to head back out uh, to test out this rear suspension compliance again. I've reset my uh, the zip ties. I don't know if you guys can see them, but press it all the way up to the uh, top of the shock body. So uh, wherever they end up is how far the shocks have been compressed down. I reset my fork up front too, but I'm too concerned about the front. Uh, the front suspension on this thing is pretty compliant. So, and I don't feel it bottoming out. So let's go ahead and give this thing a, a run here for a minute and see uh, how much tighter the rear feels. Now this bump right here, coming out of my driveway, the first time through, compressed it quite a bit. Let's see how much further it went that time. And not dump the bike. Yeah, half of the throw, but that's not nearly as much as it did last time. Last time, just coming out of my driveway, I used up like 70% of the throw on that little you know, what, two inch step at the base of my driveway. So let's see what this feels like. So I chickened out at uh, 18 or 19 clicks. I still haven't gone back on the video footage yet to verify how far in I got. But man, I was at least 18 clicks into that uh, compression side of this and uh, it was still going. But chewing up that uh, anodized coating or parkerized whatever it is that black oxide coating on those collars so I'm going to keep chewing it up if I don't need to so 
somebody else out there that feels uh, braver on their bike if you want to crank yours all the way down until it reaches the stop or falls completely off of the threaded collar you let me know how far it goes but 18 or 19 was plenty far enough for me to know that three is not sufficient for you know anybody but the lightest of riders i would think good lord i'm not that heavy i'm one hey bird oh, that was a hawk uh thank you for stopping uh the uh my riding weight is 170 give or take a couple of pounds with all my gear on so i'm not that heavy and i'm not carrying any extra gear you know no backpacks no heavy panniers with crap on it yet so upping the rear preload is definitely going to be a requirement for just about anybody uh, that's over let's say 150 pounds and the the factory manual says it it says that it's at the third position from the softest but you know uh, call me naive but uh, normally with most honda suspension uh you got those step collar adjusters and you've got five or six positions that's it so when they say it's in the third position i was thinking okay well let's set medium you know halfway mm -mm. half would be like nine or ten clicks on this thing and that's just with what i tested it might go further i don't know i don't know i have uh gone too far with those threaded collars before and uh stepped it off the end of the shock and uh <laughs> If the spring cocks slightly sideways, you are never getting that collar back on there unless you get a spring compressor, take the damn thing off the bike, and compress the spring down, and uh, reset the collar with no tension on it. Because there's no way you're getting that thing back on the threads. <clears throat> At least in the situation that I had. I've done it with mono shocks, and I've done it with traditional uh, rear shocks. Just not paying attention, cranking it down, trying to get all the way to one end of it and back it out to clean out threads or one thing or another and whoopsie come on light I'm sweating it's hot it's gonna rain we've got like a 40% chance of strong thunderstorms this afternoon so I figured I better get out and do this now before it goes crazy it's 1.23 in the afternoon 2 o'clock we've got uh, supposedly a uh, 60% chance of some nasty weather. I love the sound of this new exhaust. Love it. Love it, love it. So this road's fairly rough. I'm just traveling at about the same speed that I did on my uh, evening dinner run the other day when I tested the, uh, the travel on that rear shock. I don't really notice it feeling that much more jarring or jouncy it's okay it's firmer i can feel it's firmer but it's not uncomfortable so we're going to see how uh, some of these bumps do on uh, higher compression and see how it goes <laughs> and again i could have done this right after i first got the bike you know first day or two when i was feeling all those big bottoming out because I figured it was either way too stiff or way too soft it's just it was not quite right uh, but I wanted to video the process and present it that way other people can benefit from it if they've never done it before or they don't know what to what to expect or how to tune it so anyway videoing the process and then presenting it takes so much more time than just doing it just do it man it's so much easier to just do it throw the zip ties on there run it around the block a couple times find some big bumps find your happy mediums and call it a day but no when you video it you got camera angles you got uh, multiple takes you got uh, hopefully no uh 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 m uh yeah uh <laughs> user error all right i'm just gonna run it a couple miles down the road come back Sure, whatever uh, big compression events I'm going to have will uh, happen in that couple of miles. There are a couple of really big ripples that I hit every morning out here in the uh, HOV lane, but I don't want to go that far down. These are quick tests.
and for anybody that's doing this on their bikes, tailoring it. They've got the spanner under the seat, so you can test it. Just give it a couple of turns this way or that way, and you'll find a good spot. But the zip ties are a, uh, a handy tool to have. I mean, you should have those in your toolkit or under your seat all the time anyway, because if something breaks off of the bike or, you know, loosens up, you lose a fastener or whatever, zip ties can save your day. Yeah, so keep zip ties under your seat. Gorilla tape or duct tape, that's another good one to have. Uh, if you really want to complete spares kit, uh, you should have a couple of common fasteners that would fall off of this thing, you know, the little uh, button head, uh, five mil, six mil bolts, things like that. Uh, but definitely uh, you want uh, zip ties, uh, hell even, I, in my long road trips I usually even carry uh, stainless steel uh, safety wire that's used for racing uh, because you can do a lot with that safety wire. Road. I know it's got a bunch of good bumps. Go ahead, dude. We're going to switch back over into sport. So, when I pull back up in my driveway and take a look at the... Uh, the zip tie position and uh, wait gotta have the downshift lips <laughs> that sounds so good with this Kaufman. Kaufman's on here okay anyway so when I look at those zip tie positions if it's uh, you know full extension or full stroke or if it's buried back into the bump stop again it's not stiff enough yet because I haven't really gone anywhere with any big bumps this is just normal city crap you're going to run over in the roads, you know, it's basic stuff. Houston's roads are pretty bad in spots, but you know, this particular section out here is not. So, I'll review the uh, camera footage and uh, my zip tie position and see how it's done. With as much fun as this motor is, uh, I, I'm interrupt that thought. I really like this motor. I have not had, I've not ridden the uh, Africa Twin 1100. I rode the original 1000, uh, but it was a manual. It was not the DCT uh, when I tested that. I can't remember. Did I do both? No, no, I did the uh, I did the CTX 700 with the DCT. Anyway, uh, this motor is a lot of fun, and uh, what I am surprised at is that Honda has not put this motor in more platforms than uh, just the Africa Twin until now. Obviously, you know they got it in the Rebel. Whoa. Um, it's very playful. It's got a lot of torque, and it sounds bitchin' on a pipe. <laughs> it just sounds so good. And uh, if they were to make a uh, kind of the equivalent, I don't want to get wet. Nah. If they would make the equivalent of uh, you know, like a Yamaha's MT09, MT10 series, if they, if Honda would do that on this make a CB 1100 DCT or something, you know, whatever, I don't care. Just something uh, naked bruiser style uh, with this motor in it, but more of a, a sporty chassis. It would be an absolute ear-to-ear -ear grin, man. Because this thing, you know, it's quick, it's fun, all that, but it's not really made for carving carving. It's got decent cornering ability, but it's not a, it's not a sport bike. If you were to... Uh, put this in more of a sporty chassis oh man it would be just a hoot and don't detune it don't don't give it the mid-range punch that this has leave it in the uh africa twins uh high breathing form you know where it's got the 100 plus horsepower 112 or whatever it is uh let it breathe up top a little more than this one does and oh boy it would be fun so honda if you're listening throw this motor in a uh naked bike chassis Oh, yeah. 
and put in a Kropovich on it from the factory or make that a factory option. Oh, have some exhaust orgasmos going on. good bumps through here so trying to travel at 45 ish because that'll uh, that'll impart some good motion yeah the rear compliance doesn't seem any harsher now than it did uh, pre-adjustment so the higher spring rate really is not that bad of a deal Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go review the footage and uh, start putting this video together and show everybody what I've done. See if we uh, have success. But first, first, we're going to take a look at those zip ties. What do we got? Yep, full compression. Not buried, but full compression. So, I'm going to bump it up uh, two more notches. So, I'll be up in an eight. Keep in mind, I only weigh 170 fully loaded with all my crap on. So, uh, full compression over even moderate bumps there. I didn't get that real sharp whack in the kidneys uh, like I've been getting. So, it didn't bottom out as hard as uh, before. But, that's full stroke. Okay. Bump it up two more notches, ride it around with an eight, and see how that goes. I'll catch you all in a bit.